our uh, final uh, talk will be if I, uh, or am I, significant and insignificant mounds, again by Jennifer Coton, so she's involved in this collaboration as well, as Jesse Folkler. And Jesse Folkler is an artist. I will not say anything more about Jennifer. You have just seen her and heard her introduction. But Jesse Folkler is an artist and architect whose work sits at the intersection of landscape, politics, and performance. His writing and projects address the entanglements between landscape and law and take on themes of work, property, expertise, and perfectibility. Jesse is a McDowell Fellow, a Fulbright Scholar, and in addition to his art and design practice, is a land surveyor. He's also a co-director of the American Bottom Project, and he co-directs as well the Institute of Marking and Measuring and teaches across landscape, architecture, art, and urbanism at Washington University here in St. Louis. So I'm not sure who now presents this final. You will, yeah, wonderful. So cooperation all over the place. Thank you very much. I'm really aware that we're 45 minutes um, behind our schedule right now. And there will be another opportunity in some ways to pick up some of the themes that we're bringing um, forward in this project in our walk, which you are all invited to um, approximately 30 minutes after the um, end of the um, panel discussion. So we'll keep this relatively brief. Um, but in general, this project, Significant and Insignificant Mounds, um, is a photographic research documentary project that Jen and I have been working on for about four years. Um, and in the context of this conversation, I think it's most useful to understand it as an invitation um, to take really seriously the landscape that we find out there right now today. Um, you know, in some ways, um, it's, it's geared towards an intentional misreading of some of the multiple mounds, some of the multiple um, landscape forms that you find here today. Um, as many of you probably um, saw on your way in, um, th these are not the, the, the great Cahokia mounds are not the only mounds that reside in the floodplain. Um, the way that Henry Marie Brackenridge in 1811 stood at the base of uh, Monk's Mound and exclaimed, what a stupendous pile of earth is essentially a similar um, position that I found myself in about 10 years ago, standing at the base of the landfill that now sits immediately to, on the setting sun of Monk's Mound. Um, and so in, in many ways, this work is geared towards a, um, a question of how we begin to develop meaning within these landscapes, how we begin to derive meaning, um, and ultimately through a, um, a, um, a revisiting of both contemporary and archival material, how those landscapes in particular, how these particular forms of the landscape have been made to speak, or in many ways, how they've been silenced. Um, and so we're really in some ways trying to tell a bit of a um, history from the mounds perspective. It may be a slightly redundant, uh, here we are at uh, Milam Landfill. Um, it may be a bit redundant, um, given your tour today, to, um, to emphasize that, of course, Cahokia Mounds is not the only clustering of pre-contact mounds in the region. Um, I think it is, however, really useful to visit the way that many of the mounds outside of this immediate state park complex have been treated, have been um, dealt with, because I think it begins to say much more about the, um, the sort of like historical uh, modes of settlement, the historic attitudes and values that have been brought to this particular region. So, for example, um, as many of you, or perhaps you've already left, um, we visited um, the Wood River Refinery Station. This is a landscape in the northern American bottoms um, that effectively erased all but one of a uh, approximately 12 um, mound complex that sat along one of the perennial lakes um, in the region. The, the single remaining mound of the Grassy Lake group, then, is um, the, the, the mound known as Roxana, the South Roxana Mound. 
Um, and you would be forgiven, for example, for thinking that this um, flag and the stone would be commemorating this particular mound. However, it's not. Um, these are yet another mode of commemoration that in many ways recognizes, perhaps, the work that that mound is doing, but there ultimately this is a veterans monument. It has nothing to do with the mound itself, except for in some ways picking up on that, um, the, the, the episode and the remainder of that mound itself. Take, for example, also the um, mounds of Forest Park, um, relatively unknown clusters that sit across the river um, within the, um, um, what is now our Forest Park um, in the city. You'll see that there's two primary um, clusterings. The upper one, uh, under which um, sit, uh, or on top of which now sits the sculpture, the Apotheosis of St. Louis. Um, the sculpture built at, um, or um, the, the sculpture um, commemorating Louis the Ninth, um, the sort of from which St. Louis gets his name. And we would be, we would do well to probably agree that this might very well be the apotheosis of the kind of um, settler colonial attitude around St. Louis. Um, but I think that we might find its sort of true um, negligent um, 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 statement actually in the um, golf course. Un, that has then replaced the lower clustering of mounds in um, the um, in Forest Park. Um, moving forward then to um, what is now known as Clark's Mound on the bluff overlooking the river, we have the um, <clears throat> a, a description here in um, um, uh, 1922 Moorhead um, um, excavations, and you'll I would like to sort of point your um, attention to the government survey stone. In this case, again, there's a, a, another episode of marking this site. Um, this is actually the baseline of the Great Triangulation um, of the West. Um, and it's a site that has then um, been, again, reoccupied, in this case, by a, uh, a gazebo, um, where the um, local residents are um, sort of able to take their tea and have, of course, over the years, invited us in um, to document and to um, sort of speak with them about what it means to live with this in their life. It's, it's not a sort of space that's outside, um, in some ways, in history. It's a part of their everyday um, existence or the sort of much, um, much photographed or much more documented erasure of the, of the St. Louis mound clusters, which show up in early panoramas of the city as this large, very large sugar loaf on the bluffs overlooking the river, which underwent a, a very visible um, and not contested erasure. Um, in order to begin to build the, um, the, the railroad grades that now um, course along the North Riverfront near um, what is now the, the new Stan UCL Bridge. If we go ahead, maybe two more. Again, this site itself has seen a number of um, episodes of attempts to commemorate, attempts in some ways to describe um, the history of this site. This is one of the, um, this is when I first moved to St. Louis. This is the um, commemorative stone, um, which has since been removed and displaced down to a new um, um, commemorative um, center, which I think very importantly overlooks a minimum security um, prison facility um, on the North Riverfront. Um, there's, in, in a lot of ways, uh, sort of like, you know, continual um, externalizing of these sites of memory as well as, um, you know, these types of land uses into what is an otherwise industrial um, um, area of the city, which, you know, it effectively um, receives zero visitors. But really importantly to this work is that um, we're not exclusively reading the prehistory mounds. Um, we're really attempting to um, um, look at the mounds that continue to be produced by the industries that, on the one hand, began to, uh, were responsible for the dismantling of the original mound structures in order to very, in many cases, to build um, um, the railroads and to sort of level the floodplain in order to then produce another series of extractive uh, mechanisms that began the reproduction of mounds within the region. And so the work here is really a, um, an attempt to sort of come to grips with the fact that these 
types of landforms and these types of landscapes are really continue to exist side by side with one another um, in this landscape. And so through photographic um, um, and written um, form, we'll be mounting a series of exhibits um, and publications over the coming um, year as well. Mm -hmm. Um, instead, I know, again, time is like we're way over time, but maybe instead of my talking, maybe we have a couple of questions and, and fill in some, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With the whole group, yeah. That's with the whole group. Yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah, the whole group. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah.